Insuring your property or insuring your home loan. These are the two critical aspects of financing of property as well. We've got today Jayant Arfai, Certified Financial Planner, joining us on our Expert Speak segment today to take all your home insurance related questions. Jayan, thanks very much for joining in. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to go across to Vivek Sood. Uh, he's joining us on the phone line from Meerut. Vivek, hi. Go ahead. What's your question for Jayant? Yeah, I, I just built my house in Delhi and uh, the house has been taken by an embassy on rent. So what is my liability in terms of insurance uh, uh, if it's purely used as embassy? And uh, what am I li what, what, how can I insure my house in case it's used by... Uh, as an embassy and and a residence together. Okay, so it's a residence, come an embassy, and uh, you need to know about the insurance aspect. Uh, Jain, what do you think? It's uh, how does he go about insuring it? Uh, see, like what Vivek mentioned, this seems to be a slightly grey area because he's saying it's used as a residence as well as an embassy. Uh, see, usually the law does not permit you to conduct any commercial activity where you are not present yourself because it's unlikely that Vivek will be working in the embassy or if he's a part of the embassy or not, he's not clear. Uh, let's look at it in two ways. Uh, if, uh, see, if this is being used for commercial purposes, that is if the embassy has an office over there, the embassy could take a cover, you know, on their account. So that will cover the premises and, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the premium which they are paying, they could negotiate with Vivek so that it may be deducted from the rent that they are paying him. If it's a residence, uh, that is if the embassy is using it as a residence, then again the embassy cannot take a cover for the, uh, for the exterior of the house. Uh, they can only take a home contents insurance, that is only what is inside the uh, premises, they can take a cover for that. Uh, also he's not mentioned whether this is a standalone house or whether it's part of a building. Because if it's part of a society, the society would anyway have uh, paid uh, insurance for the exterior. No, so again, he need not worry about these that. These are standalone houses. Chanakyapuri houses are all standalone houses which are rented out to the embassies. Okay. So uh, in this okay. case, uh, see, I, I mean, I think only the embassy can take uh, an insurance for the uh, contents within. And uh, so the exterior cannot be uh, this, but they could do so if they take a cover as a corporate. That is an overall comprehensive cover which a company takes. If they do that, then even the exterior can be protected. All right, so you're saying that it's not Vivek, but the embassy which should take a corporate cover, which would be the most comprehensive and not take a householder insurance, but take a corporate cover which will also cover the building. Yeah, because in householder insurance, there's also a clause that the actual owner has to be residing there. So, for example, if I have a house, uh, say, I mean, Pune, Pune is close to Mumbai. So, if I take a house there and I don't reside there, companies will be very wary about giving me a home insurance cover for that place because anything can happen since nobody is present there. So, there's usually a clause that if the owner does not reside there for a period of over 30 days, then that cover is void. So the same thing could apply here. So it is best that the company takes it and then enters into a separate negotiation with Vivek regarding how to apportion the premium for the same. All right, Vivek. So a corporate cover which should be purchased directly by embassy which will cover the building and all the perils around the building would be your best bet and you can back negotiate with the embassy in terms of how much premium could you share or take the burden off. Manish Chen writes in this question. He says... Uh, I, th my question is that some insurance that certain companies sell to cover home loan I've taken towards my home. What is the typical premium for such insurance? And specifically, these companies also include coverage against loss of job. Does it really cover someone working in the private sector? His home loan is approximately one and a half crore. So good idea, Jayan, definitely to take a home loan cover. But uh, would you think that it will cover him against a job loss as well? See, job loss insurance was something in vogue around 2008-2009. After that, many companies have discontinued it and anyway it was a standalone cover. It usually was never available as part of a home loan cover. So, uh, basically, you can insure your home loan. That is, your nominees need not be affected by your untimely uh, demise. You know, for that you could do two things. One is this uh, home loan cover, which is also known as a mortgage redemption cover, which is a sort of a reducing some assured term plan. So wherein the amount that you pay per year as premium remains constant, the actual sum assured that reduces in line with your loan. 
So, uh, in case of your demise, whatever amount is outstanding, the insurance company will pay on your behalf, so your nominees are not affected. So, that's one way of doing it. Unfortunately, from whatever policies I have seen, uh, you usually don't get a cover beyond 50 lakhs for such kind of uh, mortgage redemption covers. So, that's a limitation. Uh, also, like uh, such covers are uh, usually up to the policy holder uh, attaining the age of 60 and not beyond. So, another way of doing the same thing uh, is to take a regular term cover. Today, there are several uh, very cheap online term covers, you know, which uh, Manish could uh, avail of. So, uh, if one and a half crores is difficult for a mortgage redemption cover, it's quite easy, uh, you know, to procure such a cover for a regular term plan. So, if Manish, uh, I don't know his age, but in, uh, usually these term covers are available nowadays to, uh, to the age of 75. So, I feel that uh, taking this is better because also, uh, although the loan balance is reducing, you know, the uh, cover in a regular term uh, plan remains constant. So, suppose the outstanding amount of the loan, uh, say, is around 50 lakhs, if Manish, uh, uh, I mean, if, uh, if he has an untimely demise. So, if that is 50 lakhs, but the level of the cover will be 1.5 crore, so that extra 1 crore can be used for something else also. So, I suggest you take a regular term cover. In terms of premia, uh, certainly the uh, online term covers are very cheap as compared to uh, a mortgage redemption cover. Uh, I don't have exact figures here because anyway it's not really pertinent because most of these covers right. do, are not beyond 50 lakhs. So I suggest an online term, term cover instead of a, um, an MRC. Okay, so Jayant, you're saying that he should go in for an online term cover. He could get the entire amount, one and a half crore. So to secure any unforeseen circumstances and the fact that your dependents might have to shell out a lot of money, which they may not, term cover is better than a mortgage cover. Thanks very much, Jayant, uh, for joining us today and taking all our questions. That's a very, very sound advice coming in from Jayant for everybody. And there are lots of times that banks actually kind of force you to. They say, hey, you're taking a bank loan from us. You have to take a home loan mortgage insurance as well. You have to turn around and say, I'd rather buy a term insurance cover of the same amount, which is so much cheaper, covers me for a longer time r than going in for a mortgage insurance cover. We've got time to take one question.